Hey there, I'm Dr. Dave. You can call me David Magic or you can call me Dan. <laughs> but whatever you call me, um, I would never... And thanks for being here. I really appreciate you. Uh, this is not going to be scripted at all. I've got a lot to share with you today. And, and I wasn't even going to do a video so quickly after my last one. But um, you guys gave me such... Number one, such positive feedback from, from kind of like my freeform video. And so many things came to my mind after I did the video that I figured, what the heck? While I've got a lot on my mind, why not talk about it? If my parents had any idea that their son, who's now in, the, in his 60s, that's me, um, was on mushrooms, on magic mushrooms, because his life was so fucked up, they'd be rolling around in their graves right now. But actually, my, my mom is still alive, so I hope she's not rolling around in her grave. But my dad probably would be. And my mom, if she ever stumbled across this video, or if people were listening to it on the audio podcast, she wouldn't believe it. Because she, to this day, still thinks my life was fucking perfect. Well, you be the judge. And sometimes, like somebody said in the comments section of my last video that maybe sometimes we need to go through a lot of stupid shit in our lives to get to where we are now. And if we hadn't gone through a lot of that BS, then maybe we wouldn't be where we are now. Well, that, that could be true with me, because right now, as I'm sitting here filming this video in my van which I'm going to show you in a second because it's it's super cool. And there's a reason I'm doing this in the van because, um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll probably tell you in a few seconds so I don't get too sidetracked because that's not the most important thing right now. The most important thing is why was my life so fucked up when I was younger? Up until just a few years ago, why was it so fucked up? Why did I not get the proper guidance going through school, going through junior high, high school, um, no guidance even getting into college, no guidance through college, except you should be a dentist. Dr. Dave, dentistry is a great profession. You should be a dentist. That's basically the guidance I got. It's crazy. I grew up in a um, basically almost an all-white, predominantly Jewish suburb of Baltimore, Maryland, Pikesville. Everybody was a high achiever. In school, everybody did well, and everybody basically was going to become a doctor, a lawyer, a dentist, an accountant, a business owner, somebody with a lot of money. Yeah, we were all going to do that at the expense of what? At, at what expense? At the expense of fucking up our lives? Yeah, maybe, because what looks good on the outside for everybody where I grew up, it doesn't really matter What's going on on the inside? As long as you look successful, as long as you're bringing in money, as long as you've got a beautiful spouse, as long as you have kids, as long as you're living in a nice big house, it doesn't matter what's going on in your brain or your body, how fucked up it might be. But if you look good, if you look good to everybody else in the community, then you've succeeded. You've reached where you should be. Well, that I'm, I'm calling total fucking bullshit on that. My life was fucked up. And I'm sorry if I'm using language that you've probably never heard me use before, because I had enough of being careful and watching what I said and being cog too cognizant of what other people thought of me throughout my entire life. My entire life. Yeah, my, my the way I got into college with no guidance after looking through many colleges on my own, my mom, who meant well, don't get me wrong, my parents really, really meant well. They were just clueless when it came to like giving advice to their children. They, they were really clueless. I, I, I feel bad because it's, it's not really their fault. They never knew. They never knew what to do. So I'll tell you how I, how I picked my college. My mom was looking through some kind of brochure at some point. She found some little private school in Virginia that looked good on the brochure. It didn't matter what I wanted or what I wanted to study, or I didn't even know what I wanted to study. This looked good because it was small. And 
so one evening, my mom and her friend, friend, she, fuck another, just a fucked up woman. No, my mom is pretty cool. This woman turned out to be a fucked up woman who's like, turned out to be like a witch. Not my mom, this other woman. And her son and I took a trip down to Ashland, Virginia. We took a road trip down to Ashland, Virginia. We looked at this college, Randolph-Macon College. It looked good to them. It looked good to everybody. We didn't know why it was good, but it just looked good. And so my friend and I decided we're going to be roommates. We're going to go to this school. We knew nothing else about it. Well, that was some pretty fucked up information. Once I got into school, I felt I had this pent up energy that I needed to release probably due to my upbringing and my first 18 years of living on this planet were such a mess that once I got down to school, Randolph-Macon College in Virginia, I did so many stupid things that I could have lost my life pretty easily. I just, I did stupid things that were definitely a result of having this negative energy that was building up inside of me for a decade and plus, you know, close to two decades. And I had to release it. And I, I'm not even going to go, I'm not even going to go into some of the stuff that I did in college. But when I look back, I'm thinking like, how did I ever make it through? And I'm still living because I was stupid, but I, I don't blame it on myself because I was just a kid. I blame it. Well, I don't really blame anybody. Like I said, my parents were clueless. And I had no direction. So I was like on my own. And that's the way, that's the way it was. My wife I'm with now is my second wife, actually. And she is the best thing that ever happened to me on this planet. She's fantastic, phenomenal perfect for me. She totally gets me. And we lived, we've been together now. How long has it been? It's been 17, 18 years. So it's not like a little thing that might pay. No, we're, we're really good. We're really good together. And we have the same philosophies on life. And about three or four years ago, we decided that living in Maryland was just not doing it for us anymore. There were many reasons. For her, the reasons were a little bit different than mine. We both love the West and we love the mountains and we love skiing. And she really wanted to move out West because we would spend a lot of time out West in the winter in Colorado and Utah. And um, in the winter we'd ski and she really wanted to live there. Whereas I wasn't against that. I thought it was a great idea. But one of the reasons I wanted to get out of Maryland and move out West is because of my, my past, my history, you know, where we lived in Maryland was, it's a pretty small, fairly small community. And like wherever we would go, whether it was to a restaurant or to a concert or some type of an event or, or anywhere, we always, I would always run into somebody from my past and I didn't like it. I didn't like always having to be always having to have the feeling that I'm going to run into this person or this person or that person. Or th I, I just, my past was my past and I, I just wanted to get rid of it and didn't, didn't like it anymore. Didn't embrace it in any way. And so we took the step to sell almost everything we owned, including our house, which by the way, was a really, really nice house. We, we loved the house. We just did not live like living in Maryland anymore, but we loved that. We sold almost everything. Yeah. We kept, we kept our skis, we kept outdoor stuff that we felt we needed. But um, as far as like material possessions, we, it just, they don't, they didn't mean a lot to us anymore. They never really did that much, but, um, but they just, we wanted to be minimal, more, much more minimalistic. So we bought this van, this van I'm sitting in right now. It's more than a van. I've referred to it in previous videos as a psychedelic van and just having fun with that. But it's a van that we could live in if we wanted to. If everything went down and we didn't have anything, we could live in this van very comfortably. 
we don't live in it. We use it on trips and we, we camp in it, but, um, but we could. So I, I've got this almost like a crutch that knowing that if, if we lost almost everything, which I don't think we will, but if we lost almost everything, we could be very comfortable and, and travel the country in this little house. Let me take you for a little tour. It'll take, it'll take a minute or two. I just really want to show this to you. Then I'll be right back. Okay, this is the inside. It looks like any other car, truck, van that you would see. So, you know, a couple seats up front. Doesn't really matter because it looks normal. But when you start going back a little further into the van, let's back up a little bit. It's got everything we need to live. So first thing we see is a microwave oven. Not bad, huh? Behind this, we see when you when you're driving the van, a lot of stuff has to be stored securely because when you go over bumps, you don't want anything rattling around. So everything is kind of hidden away right now. You won't get to see some of the stuff, but uh, I've got a generator. So if, if we're off the power grid, we can just live in this thing on a generator when we need to, to power it up. It's got a walk-in closet. Well, I say it's a walk-in closet. It's really not a walk-in closet, but it's good enough. Let's back up a little bit. I could practically walk in this closet if I had to. Well, let's see, turn around here. It's got a sink. It's got a refrigerator. Yep, that's a refrigerator right there. It's got a stove. Works on propane. It's got a full bathroom. So when I open this up, and uh, sorry, this is not real pretty, but um, we put it here only because to uh, keep the door super, super secure when we're driving, that nothing rattles around at all. So let me go ahead and... Sink, shower, toilet. This is actually bigger than most restrooms and airplanes. It's it's not large by any stretch of the imagination, but it's it's comfortable enough and it's larger than a restroom in an airplane for sure. So you can do basically anything you want. That didn't really sound right, but you can. <laughs> okay, now getting back to the really important part. This is a sofa with two chairs, but when this sofa goes down, it turns, everything turns into a king size bed. Now you heard me right. You heard me right, a king size bed. So I'll show you, we've got like, a, so a little, so there's a TV here. And um, this is one of my favorite things. It's, it's a stereo that hooks up to my phone by Bluetooth. But when we, when I pull, the, pull the, push this button in, this goes down. And I, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but if you can imagine, it goes down all the way. And then by putting a, a couple panels right here and cushions, the whole thing turns into a king size bed. And it's not just a jerry rigged king size bed. It is super, super, super comfortable. It's, it's, I'm, I'm telling you, it's, it's you, when you're, when you're sleeping in this king size bed, you don't know that you're in a van. You think that you're in the Ritz Carlton. It's that's, I'm serious. It's very, very comfortable. And we have pretty comfortable bedding for, we've got tons of closets and storage space here. It's super, super comfortable. And and sorry, I didn't. I really didn't clean it up before this video. Okay, let's come back to me now. Buying this van was perhaps one, not only one of the coolest things we've ever done in our lives, but it was like a stepping stone for totally changing our lives. We no longer have to worry about money the way we used to, uh, because again. We have enough money to do things that we want. Don't get me wrong. We're, we're, we're financially doing fine. But in case we just said at some point, screw everything and just wanted to live out of this van, we could do it. And it's a really good feeling. So I got sidetracked a little bit. I'm in the van. We're going to be doing some traveling around the country all the time. And if, I'm, if we're in your town... We'll give you a shout out and maybe you can come in and we'll have a cup of tea together or something like that. 
Anyway, um, I guess my biggest question is, I paid a huge price to live a life that I'm living right now. The life I'm living right now with my wife is really, really a wonderful life. But the price was huge. Not necessarily in working hard for it, but the price of going through all of the fucked up stuff in my younger years that I had to go through. Again, just no guidance, feeling like I didn't fit in right. Going to dental school when, again, I don't know how I got sucked into that because why did I want to become a dentist? I don't fucking know other than my mom said it was a good profession. Other than that, I don't know why I became a dentist. And then luckily I was able to piggyback another business onto dentistry. So I didn't practice. So I stopped practicing clinical dentistry because if I practiced clinical dentistry for my entire working career, I, I, I would have, I probably would have killed myself. And I've never been, I've never been suicidal and I'm not trying to poke fun of anybody that, you know, has gone through horrible stuff like that in their lives, either themselves or a loved one or, um, no, I've, I've never been suicidal, but, but I don't think I could have practiced dentistry my whole, I could, I couldn't have practiced any longer than I did. It just, it just, it, it just wasn't for me. It wasn't, it wasn't what I, what I should, what I should have been doing for my entire life. It just wasn't. Many times I wondered whether I should, I would have been better off following the Grateful Dead around the country, maybe around the world instead of going to dental school. But where would that have gotten me? Yeah, I would have had some fun following the Grateful Dead, but, but in the end, would I have been able to be responsible enough to put my kids through college and, and pay for weddings and, and um, be able to afford the stuff that my wife and I do now? No, I, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer. I, 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 so like somebody, several of you said, maybe we have to go through a lot of craziness in our lives to get to where we, to, to realize where we finally want to be. And, but I don't know, is, is it, is it, is it fair that we're put on this planet and for over two thirds or three quarters of our lives, we, we have to do things that are not meant to be just so we can live a good life in the future. I don't have the answer to that. Or would it have been better if I would have been doing what I loved all along, maybe not as made as much money, but, but loved I would say probably yes I would say that's probably a better life but here I am I just turned 67 a few days ago I got to ski on my birthday which was incredibly cool never did that in my life but now that we're in Utah we can I can ski on my birthday if I want we'll probably be able to ski into June if I want if we want but I paid a huge price for this and because of the huge price in therapy and I take magic mushrooms. I take magic mushrooms because I had to unfuck my life up. And they're the only thing in 67 years, they are the only thing I found that totally unfucked my life. So don't feel sorry for me. I don't want you to feel sorry for me. Right now, as I'm sitting here talking to you, I actually feel fantastic. I feel really, really good. But I wanted to share with you the 60 plus years that maybe I didn't feel so good. So if genetics plays a part, I could be around for a while. My late grandfather on my mother's side, he lived until he was 106 years old. So I, I possibly could have good genes. All of my grandparents lived. The, the, the youngest, any, grand, any, grand, any of my four grandparents, the youngest one died at um, 80, 86 or 87, something, that was the youngest. So am I guaranteed that? No, but it's likely I'd say so. I'm going to be giving these, I'm going to be doing these videos for you, hopefully for another 30 years. I hope you can learn something from me. <laughs> Could you imagine me being like 90, 96 years old? 
Well, uh, I'm, I'm telling you, I, my life was screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I can do these videos for you when I'm 96. I hope I can. But there's no, there's no guarantee. There's nothing given. But I feel good now. And again, the psilocybin magic mushrooms have saved my life fucking life. So I don't know if you can relate to any of this or a little bit of it or bits and pieces, but if you're even remotely in the same situation that I have been in in my life, that's why I'm doing this for you because I think they can help you in a tremendous way. Without the magic mushrooms, I would just be plodding along doing what I've been doing for 60 plus years. And I'd be okay, but not really. Not really. And I feel like I've got so much to share with you, so much that's coming out. And I, I, I'm not going to do it all in one video because it's way too long. But I, when I come back, I, I've got so many things about my fucked up life that I could share with you. Remind me, please. I will. I'll do it. If you like this, let me know. Let me know. If you, if you think I'm on too much of a tangent, let me know. I'll get back to simple videos like here's how you microdose. There's only so much you can talk about. There's only so much you can learn about. Here's how you microdose. This is a bigger picture. And I'm here to share and not hold anything back with you. Until next time, I am Dr. Dave. Or Dr. Dan. Or David Magic. Call me whatever you like. You'll probably come up with better nicknames than that. But I really am Dr. Dave. This is not to be meant as medical advice this is meant more to be sharing my fucked up life and hoping that if you can identify with anything, you can say to yourself, I'm going to be okay. Because if Dr. Dave could do it and he could change his whole life around and be in a super, super, super good place right now, no matter how long it took, I can do the same thing. That's what I'm here to share with you. You can do it. I promise you, you can do it. Until next time sending you love wherever you are on this planet. See you later.